morning, everyone. So let us start again with the uh, part for business letter. There's some still confusions and some doubts in your mind. So what are actually the parts of the letter? This has been explained again and again, but then there's still some doubts. So here again, we are there for you. So the parts of a business letter. There are 14 parts of a business letter. Let us discuss one by one. The heading, once again, the heading or the letterhead. Heading means your name, your address, your complete address. You write, the first thing which you do when you're writing a letter is you write your name, you write your complete address. And then what is a letterhead? A letterhead is the official writing material, writing pad of a company. So a letterhead usually contains the name and the address of the business or the organization. It can also have an email address, contact number, fax number, the logo, trademark, or the branches of the, of the office. Secondly, we will leave a space after the heading and then we'll write the date. So if you're writing a letter, any kind of letter, a professional letter, you write your name, your address, you leave a space. See, format is very important. And then you write the date. <clears throat> and we write the date below the heading. The third is the reference. Or if you're, if you're writing an official letter, you're walking anywhere, you need to write the reference, which is very important. So a reference, kya hai? what is a reference? So it shows the department of the and the organization sending the letter, the information of the organization and the department. The letter number can be also used as a reference. For example, you can write a reference, the company's initials, like if it is Godrej India Limited, the initials will be there, G-I-L, oblique. If the uh, department is HR, it is, you'll write HR. If it is marketing, you write marketing. It, it totally depends on you, on your department. You are writing a letter from which department? And then the number of letters. So the initial of the company, the initial of the department, and the number of letters written. With the first letter, 01. If it is the seventh letter, 07. So this will make up your reference. Like I said, it shows the department of the organization sending the letter. The letter number can also be used as a reference. The inside address. A lot of confusion about what actually is an inside address. So the inside address is the person, the person's address you are writing the letter to. Aap jisko letter likh rahe hain, uska name, uska job title, and uska address. So what, whatever will be on the envelope will be inside the letter. So after the date and the reference, you'll write the inside address. So it includes the name and address, postal code, and the job title of the recipient, of the person who is going to receive this letter. It must be mentioned after the reference, and one must write inside address on the left-hand side of the sheet. This already has been told you so many times that in the block style letter, everything is aligned to the left. Most importantly, the fifth is the subject line. You cannot write a letter, you cannot write an official letter without the subject line. So subject line kya hai? It is a brief statement mentioning the reason for writing the letter. It should be clear, eye-catchy, short, simple, and easily understandable. For example, if you are asking for a loan, or if you're asking for a leave for five days, the subject line would read, request for a leave for five days. So the subject line should be enough to carry the message what you want to convey. And then the sixth is the greetings line, or the salute, we say it, we uh, call it in technical terms, the salutation, wherein you greet the recipient, like dear sir, dear ma'am. So it contains the words to greet the recipient. It is also known as the salutation. So the type of salutation depends upon the relationship with the recipient. If you know the person, you can write Mr. Sharma, Mr. Gupta, or uh, normally in official letters, the sir and ma'am is enough. 
and you do not need anything else. So it generally includes words like dear, respected, or just sir or madam or MS. MS, let me remind you, shows for whether the person is married or unmarried. You write M and a capital and a lowercase s and a comma. Usually follows the salutation. <clears throat> now, the body paragraphs. The seventh is the body paragraph. This is the main part of the letter. It contains the actual message of the center. The main body of the mail must be clear and simple to understand. The body of the letter is basically divided into three main categories. The first is the opening part wherein you introduce yourself and tell, and tell the recipient why you are writing this letter. The second paragraph, the main part is the part, this paragraph says, your main idea and what you want the receiver to, how you want the receiver to act or, or what are you expecting from the receiver. It must be clear, concise, complete and to the point. And then there's a concluding part, the last part of the letter wherein you, it is a conclusion when you are about to end the letter. So it shows the suggestions or the re re request once again, for what you have asked for in the first paragraph. The closing of this letter shows the, the expectations of the sender from the recipient and always end your mail by courteous words, like courteous means polite words, good words, like thank you, thanking you with warm regards. We look forward to hearing from you, from your side and etc. You must always close your letter in a very confident, but a very positive note, on a positive note, sorry. And the eight is the complimentary close. You are signing off, like it is a humble way of ending a letter, like yours sincerely, yours faithfully, yours truly, and with thanks and kind regards. <clears throat> The ninth part is the, is the uh, your signature, writer's identification. It includes the signature and the designation, if any, like if you are your name and then if you are the uh, executive or the manager, you must put in your name and the designation. It also includes other details like contact numbers, address, etc. The signature is handwritten just above the name of the center. So here your letter ends and there are some additional points which you need to know. Like the, the, the 10th point, enclosures. It means if you have attached your by, your uh, resume, if you have at, attached a receipt or an invoice or a bill or a photograph or a check, then you must mention this in your letter. And plus you must also mention after you sign off, after your sincerely XYZ. Then you write E N C L enclosures. A A means as above. Jaisa maine upar likha hai. So enclosures show the document attached to the letter. The documents can be anything like checks, drafts, bills, receipts, invoices, etc. And it is listed one by one. And then there's C C or copy circulation. It means if you're writing one letter and sending this to other people. Then you have to you need to write CC. So it is needed when the copies of the letter are sent to other persons as well. And it is denoted as CC or copy circulation. In common words, we use it as commonly known as CC or carbon copy. Then the 12 is the blind carbon copy. BCC stands for blind carbon copy. It means just like the CC, BCC is a way of sending copies to many people. But then in the CC, you already know, people know who else has received this letter. But in a blind carbon copy, you can send to 100 people and these people will not know who else you have sent the letter to. So this is blindly sent. The person, only you will know and the person who gets this will know. Otherwise, the other people will not know anything about the uh, recipients of the letter. 
So the difference between the, the two is that while you can see a list of recipients when CC is used, and that's not the case with BCC, it is called blind common copy because the other recipients won't be able to see that someone else has been sent a copy of the mail. 13, postscript PS. The sender can mention it when he wants to or she wants to add something other than the message in the body of the letter. It is like an afterthought. You're writing something very important, but then it is written as PS. For example, you can write PS. Be, please be seated if you're writing a letter to invite someone. You can write PS, please be seated by five. Yeah. Or PS, please bring along your cards. Similarly, nota bene. Nota bene means the same thing a note well. It means the afterthought. When you finished off signing off the letter, you can write nota bene. It means something extra which is of equal importance. And the difference between postscript and nota bene is that the postscript can be written in a informal or a formal letter as well. Like a child going to a hostel can write back to his mother that he's missing home and family. And P.S. I love you, mom. So this is the informal style. And the nota bene is a little uh, official. So when you want to write, you can use both uh, P.S. or nota bene, nota bene in uh, official. But P.S. is only written in uh, personal letters. So this was the 14 types of uh, parts of a letter. I hope you have understood this and then we'll talk more on the types of letters in the next session. Thank you.